everyone. Um, Honorable Minister Shandrani, uh, Ms. Donna Scott, Vice President of WEFCO. I don't know if Mr. Alfred Grish is here. Yes, he's here. Secretary, uh, sorry, CEO of uh, Foundation of Social Welfare Services. Ms. Jana Heinsworth, Secretary General, Eurochild. Professor Kevin Brown, I've had the privilege to meet Professor Brown from the University of Nottingham, and he is the keynote speaker for, for this morning. Mr. Paul Gutt, National Foster Care Association of Malta, somewhere around. Dr. Ruth Faruja, Director General of the uh, President's Foundation for the Wellbeing of Society. Distinguished guests, dear friends, good morning. I will not be speaking of plans, but I will be speaking of my passion um, with regards to children out of home care. So let me begin by once again welcoming you all to the Maltese Islands. I must say that this international conference is a celebration of the joint effort and goodwill of many individuals and organizations. I must especially commend the hard work of the International Foster Care Organization and the efforts of my foundation, the President's Foundation for the Wellbeing of Society, for facilitating this event while working in collaboration with the National Foster Care Association of Malta, the Foundation for Social Welfare Services, Eurochild, and other partners. This international conference is a true celebration of a successful and wide collaboration. This is a collaboration that has succeeded in bringing together diverse stakeholders from 41 countries, which is something, to participate in this much anticipated event. Most importantly, I feel truly honored that this year's international conference is being held in Malta, because this is a conference with a difference. It is a conference which is unique in scope and vision. We have endeavored to ensure that the goals of this conference are led by the many children and young people worldwide who are in foster care and out of home care. So it is so moving for me to see so many children and young people in attendance. Let me also take a moment to commend the Malta Community Chest Fund Foundation for sponsoring 30 children for this particular event. I must also take the opportunity to welcome the important findings of the researchers from Eurochild while working on Child Anomics report, which will also be presented to this conference. I am confident that our national authorities will be enthusiastic and committed to implement the recommendations that this report is proposing. I am convinced that this conference is another opportunity for all of us to further commit ourselves to do our utmost to ensure that each and every child in out-of-home care receives the very best support which our societies can and are duty-bound to provide. The attendance of foster carers, residential care workers, and other professionals at this conference is evidence of the dedication felt by all of us to ensure that respect and dignity are the basic values on which the necessary support is given to children out of home care. The interest shown and the eventual attendance of so many professionals at this conference is a statement in itself. It is a reminder to all of us in positions of influence that policy, decision, policy decisions and casework choices can and do have life-altering effects on individual children and their families. We must remember that each decision which is taken regarding the well-being of our children has direct impact on the overall well-being of our communities and our societies. For this reason, we must also remember that children's rights are fundamentally human rights. When the rights and freedoms of the most vulnerable members of our communities are safeguarded and protected, we will be working to secure the effective and much needed positive changes which will transpire into progress for all of our communities and societies. Our presence here today should make us activists for the much needed connected vision of well-being for our children and our communities. The importance of a connected vision of well-being 
is clearly reflected in the theme of this conference, setting sail from a safe port. Our children and young people can only set sail from a truly safe port if they are given the opportunity to build enriching and permanent relationships in the context of stable placements. A research study conducted by my Foundation for the Wellbeing of Society regarding relationships clearly shows that deep-rooted and resilient relationships are the cornerstone of success for all human well-being. For this reason, we cannot compromise on the opportunities afforded to children in out-of-home care. Security and stability are fundamental prerequisites for all of our children, whoever and wherever they might be. We cannot compromise on making the necessary investment which our societies must make to provide the best caregivers, placements, and institutions to safeguard their well-being. We cannot be afraid to make tough decisions when it comes to legislation, policy, and implementation, thereby ensuring that our children really do come first at every step of the process. If our children and young people are denied the opportunity to set sail from a safe port, their chances of successfully navigating their way through life will be negatively impacted. I regret to say that unfortunately, we are as yet far from being in a position to confidently state that all our children are really being safeguarded at every stage of their journey through care. We are also far from being able to say that children, especially those children who are at the heart of this conference, are truly enjoying the same rights and opportunities as all other children in our societies. However, I am not pessimistic, and hence I am confident that the necessary goodwill is present to put things in the proper order. The attendance of a such a large number of foster carers and residential care workers here at this conference is truly encouraging and inspiring. Your presence is an indication of our united commitment to change the status quo and replace it with a better, more nurturing, and more child-focused vision of care. Our children are individuals with a voice, and their voices must be heard. Their age is no excuse for their rights to be compromised or downgraded. It is our responsibility and our duty as adults to find ways of facilitating their voices and highlighting their experiences. Our children must be our advocates for change. It is in this way that we can introduce new processes of change, which will have far-reaching effects for the provision of care in our communities and societies. My experience from when I was Minister for Family and Social Solidarity, as well as my experience in close contact with children and families in Malta and even beyond, has taught me that listening to the voices of children is essential and imperative. Children have the ability to tell their stories in the most clear of ways. Children need to be heard. It is their ultimate right. Let me encourage you to be champions of children's rights, guardians of their best interests, and advocates for their holistic well-being. We cannot stand idle when so many children and young people are getting lost in the labyrinths of institutional structures and formal systems. We must be vociferous by pushing policies and initiatives that support high quality out-of-home care. We must continue believing in our ability to affect change and to create the necessary shifts in mentality which we can make happen. 
when we are determined catalysts for the transformation of our societies. The decisions we make in our professional capacities will have a crucial role in ensuring the protection of our children. This is a great responsibility, but it is also a full privilege. I urge you to embrace it and act upon it for the ultimate benefit of our children, our communities, and our societies. All children are entitled to the very best possible care. We must therefore act on our legal, ethical, and social obligations to meet the diverse, complex, and human needs of each and every child. I believe that we have an obligation to effectively evaluate the state's success as a parent and to address any shortcomings in a timely and efficient manner. This is also why I am so pleased that IFCO chose Malta for this international conference. IFCO motivates and militates for such results to ensure the holistic well-being of, of the child during care and also when leaving care. Let us therefore challenge ourselves by analyzing and asking what more we can do to ensure that the well-being of the child is truly a top priority. And if our findings show that it is not, then we must ask how can we get our systems and structures on the, pop on the proper track. Let me conclude by thanking all caregivers for the choices you have made to offer yourselves as a safe port for the children in your care. I thank you for being role models of safe and respectful relationships. Likewise, let me extend my thanks to the professionals attending this conference as social workers, psychologists, doctors, psychiatrists, teachers, lawyers, and other professionals who are involved in taking decisions and formulating care plans. I urge you to always keep in mind that children are individuals with rights. Let us continue working together to create a world where the dignity of every child is at the heart of our societies. Let us create a world which is worthy of the trust, the respect, and the love that each and every child is able to give. Let me encourage you once again to be effective activists of children's rights and a source of strength and empowerment for all children in out-of-home care. I wish you all a fruitful and successful conference, and I really thank you for your attention.